In this video, I'll give you a tour of NC State's Quick Start course shell in Moodle, which has been updated for summer 2024. What is the Quick Start course shell? It's a framework into which you can build or organize a course. It's designed to provide consistency in online course design by providing guidance based on best practices for quality online education. The Quick Start course shell design maximizes usability, readability, navigation, and accessibility. I have the Quick Start course shell open, and I'm in the course as an instructor. Editing is turned off, and all course sections have been collapsed. For now, I'm going to close the course index in the block drawer while we focus on the center area of the page. The layout of the Quick Start course shell is show all sections on one page. If you'd like to show one section per page, simply go to Settings, Course Format, Course Layout to change this. The sections in the Quick Start course shell include a course resources section, a start here section, a sample module, and an instructor sandbox, which is hidden from students. The instructor sandbox is simply a place for you to work and plan directly in your Moodle course, but in a place where students won't be able to see items until or unless you move them into a visible section. Let's tour each section in detail, starting at the top of the course. The course resources is a place to put items you'd like students to find easily throughout the duration of the course. The first two items in the course resources are for instructor reference only. Once you finish with them, you can choose to delete them if you like, but they're not visible to students. First, you'll find a page of instructions for using the Quick Start course shell. It includes a link to this video and a link to the user guide for the shell. Next is a page of suggested items to add to your course resources section. We'll come back to that in a second. We've received some feedback that students are collapsing the block drawer and then forgetting it exists. So we added a note here as a reminder to them that they may find important course resources there. Next is the announcements forum, used to send updates and notifications to all students enrolled in the course. Remember, these announcements are also delivered to all course participants via email. It's a one-way forum that only instructors can post to. The Student Help Forum is a place where students and the instructor can discuss student questions about the course. What else might you add to course resources? Well, let's take a look at the instructor reference page. We recommend including your syllabus in the course resources, perhaps as a URL resource to a Google Doc or as a file resource. We've provided a link to NC State's syllabus template, which is another tool that can provide consistency for students across courses. This template contains all the components required by NC State syllabus regulation, as well as other items informed by best practices. We also recommend including your course map if you have one, also as a URL resource or a file, and we've provided links to a course map template, as well as some links to learn more about how course maps can provide transparency in your course design on this page. You might also include links to regularly accessed online reference materials specific to your course in the course resources section. If you have a lot of these, you can consolidate them into a Moodle page if they're links or into a folder if they're files. This helps to keep the course resources section from becoming too long. A long course resources section is particularly a concern if you use the show one section per page layout, because in that layout, the top section of your course is always fully expanded at the top of the course. To maximize usability, students shouldn't have to scroll past a lot of reference material each time they open the course. This is less of an issue when you use the show all sections on one page, since this section can be collapsed in that layout. The next section in the Quick Start course shell is the Start Here section. This section serves several important purposes, all related to usability and navigation of your course when a student first enters. The Start Here section is unmistakably the place where students should get started, which helps them to know what to do the first time they log in. The section welcomes your students and sets the tone for your course from the start. And it gives students important information about the expectations, the structure, and the flow of the course that they should know from the beginning. Within Start Here, we have an Overview subsection and a Resources and Activities subsection grouped under those headings. We've made headings for each of these subsections stand out by putting white text on an innovation blue background. You'll see this design element elsewhere in the course. This gives consistency to the organization of each module or course section. In the Start Here overview, 
you'll find sample text that you can modify. We recommend providing a summary here of the purpose of the section and what your students will find here. Next, we recommend giving students a task list. We've added two suggested items to the task list already, completing the online and distance education virtual orientation and or the learning with Moodle tutorial if a student is new to NC State and Moodle. And we've added reading the syllabus, which they'll find in the course resources section. You'll likely have other tasks for students to do to get started in your course, so list them here. Remember to edit and customize all of this example text before the course goes live. In the Start Here Resources and Activities, you'll first find a page once again hidden from students that lists items you might consider adding to Start Here in your course. We've included the rationale for the Start Here section and a copy of the sample text here, and scrolling down, you'll find suggested resources and activities. The importance of each of these items can somewhat depend on the format of your course. If your course is fully online, we highly recommend a welcome video and a guided tour of the Moodle site. You'll find information about each item as well as links to examples. Regardless of format, a course overview and a copy of a welcome letter that you send out to students is nice to include. You'll find templates for both on this page. Last, you'll find the recommendation that you include an Introduce Yourself forum, where students can start to get to know one another and build a learning community. We've added an Introduce Yourself forum here for your convenience. You'll want to edit any settings and requirements for this forum to suit your own purposes. Next, we have a sample module. Use this sample as a guide and modify it as needed into what fits your course best and then duplicate it as many times as needed depending on the number of units or modules in your course. Let's start with the module title. We've suggested a consistent format for module titles that will ease navigation through the course. It includes a module number, a concise descriptive title, and the dates for the module. For guidance on using the customizable template, see this page for instructors, which is not visible to students. As you view this module as a whole, notice the consistency of our design elements with the blue subsection headers. Headers that stand out make the page more easily readable and lend an organizational structure to the module. The overview of each module is meant to give students a sense of what to expect in that unit of the course. You might offer a summary, introductory text or even an introductory video and share the learning objectives for that module. Sharing learning objectives helps, st helps students know what they should be working to achieve and a sense of how they will be assessed on the module content. A student task list will communicate clearly what students need to do to complete the module successfully. Next, we have some possible other subsections of the module. The sample module provides one possible organizational scheme that reflects best practices in asynchronous online courses and encourages you to modify as needed to fit your course structure. Regardless of how you organize your course, be sure to provide guidance for how to use the materials or complete the activities for each section. Organize your learning materials, your learning activities, and your assessments in a way that reflects your recommendations for how students should proceed through the module. You might use this scheme or you might change and adapt the scheme to fit how you recommend students interact with your course material. If you want to change the title of any of these subheadings, simply turn editing on, go to edit settings in the three dot menu to the right of the text and media area and modify the text. You want to modify both the title of the text and media area which is what shows up in the course index. And in a moment, we'll look at the course index to be clear why this matters. You'll also wanna change the text within the label, which is what shows on the main course page. To add additional module subsections, go to duplicate in the three dot menu, and then edit the name and the text of the copied heading as described before. Again, once you've decided on an organizational scheme that works for your course, stick as much as possible with that theme from module to module. This helps students focus on learning and not on figuring out where to find things each week. 
As described earlier, once you have your first module set like you like it, you can duplicate it by using the three dot menu to the right of the course section name to create as many as you need for your course. Let's take a quick look at the course index. I'm now viewing the course as a student. As mentioned earlier, in this version of Moodle, the titles of text and media areas do appear in the course index for students. For instance, the reminder about the block drawer is a text and media area. In the editing view of that reminder, you can see the name of the text and media area is block drawer reminder. The content of that text and media area is below. Back in the student view, we see block drawer reminder, the title of the text and media area in the index. The Quick Start course shell only has a few activities and right now most of what you see in the index are these labels. As long as all my course sections are open, I can navigate not only to activities, but also to these text and media areas and subsections of the course. And any activities or resources I have indented on the main page, like this Introduce Yourself forum, are also indented in the index. And this makes the structure and hierarchy of your course clear in the index. Now let's look at what's included in the blocks of the Quick Start course shell. I'm back in the role of instructor now. The Meet Your Instructor block is a text area that is fully editable by you. Include this block to put your contact information front and center and to include a picture of yourself to humanize your course. To modify this block, turn Edit Mode on, click on the gear button at the top right of the block and choose Configure Meet Your Instructor block. The next block provides links to the virtual orientation to online and distance education and a learning with Moodle tutorial. And remember, we also suggested that you include these resources as an optional activity in the Start Here section. So you can choose to include this information in one or both places. The Activities block provides a quick way for you and your students to view all activities of a certain type on one page. For instance, a student could view all the quizzes for the course, all the forums, etc. So if I click on Forums, I can see all the forums in the course and the information about each. Now the shell only has forms and resources, so that's all that's currently listed in the activities block. But when you add more activity types to your course, they will appear here. The student services block is maintained and updated by the NC State Delta online course quality team and cannot be edited. It offers quick links for students to access important course resources. And last, the instructor resources and support block is neither visible to students nor is it editable but it's a place for you to quickly access support and resources for your teaching. This concludes your tour of the Quick Start course shell. If you wanna use the course shell, in the Moodle settings in Wolfware, scroll to the bottom of the page and select the Quick Start course shell as your source when you create your new Moodle space. More guidance is available in the user guide, which is linked below this video and found at go.ncsu.edu slash Moodle course shell.